Hello everyone and welcome to Quality Old Games. Today we are doing another tier list video, namely of Macedon roster. And the tier list is based on campaigns, so not the multiplayer. So some weaker unit might, may get a higher position here and some stronger unit uh, lower position based on the campaign setting. And we will start with cavalry units. First we have the bodyguards and the early bodyguard as first one. And I think that's pretty decent cavalry unit. Macedon has a decent cavalry, cavalry roster overall, but I think uh, this early bodyguard is at least strong decent, if not that good. But let's place it decent category first. And basically the reason is that as we get a new character, the bodyguard comes free along. Of course the upkeep cost is there, but nonetheless it's at least decent. And of course the late bodyguard is at least strong good, if not weak superior unit. And the reasons are pretty much the same as for the early bodyguard, except the late bodyguard is overall stronger. Then we have kind of Macedonian specialty, the companion cavalry. I think the Seleucids have it also, but no other factions. It requires, I guess, uh, tier 4 stables to build, and that requires tier 5 city. It takes two turns to build. It's maybe not up to challenging Praetorian cavalry, but it's pretty decent nonetheless. Uh, actually very good. So it earns a place in good category. Let's see if we get... Uh, uh, something in the superior category, or if not, then we will move the bodyguard there. Then we have the Greek cavalry. And in most of the other rosters, for example, with Greek, it's indecent. Maybe in Seleucid it was as well. But in the Macedonian roster, it's absolutely trash. And the reason is that it requires tier 2 stables to build. And in itself it's okay unit, but you can bet, get a better cavalry unit from tier 1 stables, namely the Light Lancers. And I think they are actually very good unit, considering they are tier 1 cavalry unit. So they get a place in good tier. Uh, they get a charge bonus, and their weakness is that they are vulnerable to missiles and they cannot sustain prolonged fight against the enemy, so they are kind of hit and run units. But they are pretty good at what they do. And that's the reason they get a good tier. And that's also the reason why the Greek cavalry in Macedonian roster gets the trust tier. And then we have the Macedonian cavalry. It's a bit worse than companion cavalry. Pretty decent nonetheless. Take two, two turns to build, requires tier 3 stables. So it's pretty okay, and because of that, it gets a decent tier. And of course, in the shorter campaign, you almost, or oh, it's pretty rare to get companion cavalry or Macedonian cavalry, so you mostly do with bodyguards and these two Greek cavalry and light lancers, but. If you get this far, this is pretty decent unit. Then it's time to move to infantry. And first, let's put the militia hoplites. They are tier 1 infantry unit. Pretty decent, especially in holding cities and other defensive battles. At least in city square, where they won't break. They are excellent for their cost, and because of that they get a strong decent, or I think they get a strong decent tier here. And then we have uh, the uh, peasants, and of course in early game they are not that useful, and in battle overall not that useful, but in late game in managing the public order in cities they are pretty much essential 
because of the low upkeep and they take up a large amount of the population and bring a large amount of bonuses for the garrison, bonus for public order. So because of that they get a place in superior tier. And then we have the Phalanx pikemen, tier 3 military units or infantry units. They are okay, they absolutely fight better than the militia hoplites, but there is two uh, barracks tier difference in them. So you need to have tier 3 city to train these. And because of that, they get only a decent tier, and also that will be below those of the militia hoplites. And then we have the Levi Spearmen, another militia unit practically. And these are tier 2 infantry unit, and they have a larger number of men than the militia hoplites but they are vulnerable to missiles and uh, you cannot rely on them in uh, uh, real offensive combat at least, maybe in some defensive combats you can, but they break quite easily and because of that they get a bad tier because it takes more to train them and they are not that much better than the militia hoplites, so that's the reason for the bad tier. And then we have the Royal Pikemen, tier 4 infantry units, the best that the Macedon roster has available. And these of course are pretty good. Um, they can take on one-on-one -on -one pretty much everything, especially in defensive battles. So that puts them definitely in good tier. It takes two turns to build them, that's a minus, and it takes tier 4 uh, barracks to construct them, so that's also a minus. And because of these facts, it's pretty much only used in late game, because you don't have a city or barracks enough, uh, high enough to build them. But I think they will be put in good tier as well. They are not that great. If, if it would take one turn to build them, I think they would be superior. But I think they are good. And then we can move to missile units. We have archers and once again they are pretty good. And of course as these are this is the best missile unit that the Macedon has available. Because of that they get a bit higher tier as well. Not over the General's bodyguard, but uh, pretty decent nonetheless, especially attacking uh, uh, settlements that have wooden palisades and defensive battles as well. They can cause co quite a damage. Of course, in late game, their effectiveness drops somewhat because the enemy units get better armor and have mostly shields and so on. So, because of that, they get a decent place. They are quite cheap, by the way, so you don't even have to pay that much to get them. And then we have Beltasts, and they are also trash. So, as in other videos, they are not, not good units. At least I prefer always archers to Beltast because of the uh, low amount of missiles they carry. And after they have shot them, they are absolutely worthless in melee. So, because of that, they are trash. Not bad tier because um, uh, you can actually do more with these Levi Spearmen than with the Beltasts. But because of the Light Lancers being so much better than the Greek cavalry here, uh, they get a place above the Greek cavalry. And Macedonian roster for missile units is pretty thin, so we move to siege units, and as I have said before in other videos, I don't really like siege units, because uh, in most of the battles they don't do much damage and they slow down the army. So there are basically two situations where I might consider using them. If I need to knock out city walls, that might be useful, or if I can lob some ammunition to the city center where the enemy forces are concentrated, then they can do pretty decent damage and also in 
other battles where the enemy is moving very slowly and they have very concentrated formations, uh, at least Onichers will do pretty decently there. But in other cases, I don't really use them. So the basic siege unit is Ballista and it gets a bad tier. It requires tier 2 uh, archery building to construct and that in turn requires tier 3 city. So not an early game unit in most cases. And it's not very good. Of course, you need to fight the Greek cities and there against Spartan hoplites or armored hoplites, it's okay. But the uh, fire speed is quite low. And even though if one missile can impale two men, there are only two ballistas in one unit. So uh, I don't think they are worth, worth it in the campaign. I would rather have a unit of archers instead of ballistas. Then we have heavy archers. They require tier 4 archery building and they take two turns to construct. They are quite expensive. There is some benefits for having them instead of uh, normal onichers, but I think the cost and uh, higher building time out uh, uh, is, is more than the benefits they receive. So I think these are bad also. And then we have the normal onichers, which are I think the best of the siege units that Macedon can get or any faction. Uh, so I think they will get a decent tier because uh, there is not so much difference between an Onitcher and Heavy Onitcher unit and, uh, and it's easier to get them and uh, it, they are also cheaper and cheaper to maintain. So I guess this will be my tier list. Let's see if we should put the bodyguard to superior tier. I guess not. Uh, don't get me wrong, Macedon has a solid roster, but not as good as, for example, the Seleucids or Romans and so on. But uh, pretty decent roster nonetheless. What do you think? Do you agree or disagree? You can post your opinion in the comments. Uh, would you like to see some unit raised to more higher tier or someone put into the lower tier? Thank you very much for watching. If you like the content, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. That would help a great deal. Have a great rest of the day. Quality old games out.